Okay, I'm going to invite our First Communion children to come up here to the altar today. Come on up here, guys. You can sit down below or sit here on the steps. Come on up. Have a seat here. We'll spread you out here. Okay, turn around, guys. You can look at me here. All right, there you go. Well, we all want to look at you, too. That's okay. <laughs> all right, everybody turn around. So, I want to tell you a little story about when I was in second grade. Uh, I know some of you are a little older, but a lot of you are in second grade. So, my best friend when I was in second grade, his name was Jonathan. Jonathan invited me to go to attend his church he belonged to the Baptist church down the street from where I live. And in his Baptist church, they had this group called Awanas. And in Awanas, you got an award if you memorized the Bible verse. And then you, had, you got to go up to the next level. And so I practiced very, very hard as a second grader, and I learned this Bible verse. Let's see how I do here. I'm not going to look. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. How'd I do? Great. All right. <laughs> All right. And as an award, I got the Sparky Award. And I still have it. It's right here. <laughs> it says... It says the Bible verse on it, John 3, 16. And so you can call me Father Sparky. <laughs> so I've told the parishioners that story before. But that Bible verse, it meant a lot to me because it reminded me that God loves me. God loves the world so much. That means he loves every single one of you as well. And that reminded me to believe. And it reminded me that our faith is about life. It's about living and having a life, a blessed life. And you guys today are blessed because you're receiving Jesus for the first time in Holy Communion. And it's not a prize. It's not an award. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> but instead, it's something much, much more, his precious body. It's a step to grow. It's a step to grow more and more and more as a disciple of Jesus. The word disciple simply means learner or student. Just like your students at school, we are lifelong disciples. We keep growing and growing and growing all through our life to become more like Christ. And just remember that God loves you because he said so. He said so. So I've been talking about here the last couple weeks in church about our words. Our words matter, don't they? Our words are very important. We can shape our whole life by the words we say, and we influence everybody around us by the words we say. So if we say bad things or people say bad things to us, it can be very, very hurtful, right? When, when people say bad things to us, it can wound us and hurt us. But on the other hand, when we hear good words, when people say kind and loving words to us, it can lift up our hearts and our spirits it can feel like the best thing in the world when someone says something kind and loving to us. Our words matter. And there's a Bible verse from Proverbs that I like. It goes like this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who choose one shall eat its fruit. Whoa, what does that mean? That means in our words and our mouth that we speak, we are saying death or we are saying life. That's how powerful our words are. And either way, we're going to enjoy its fruits. We'll see the results, in other words, of what we say. So in the beginning of the Bible, the very beginning, God spoke and things happened. And that is the, the power we have as human beings because we're made in the image and likeness of God. And our ability to communicate, to talk, we image God. God said, let there be light, there was light. And God made things come into existence. Now, I don't know about you, but I wish I could say, let there be ice cream, and there was ice cream. <laughs> but 
we, we can do, I, don't, I don't have that power. Do you have that power? No. But we do have the power of our words to say kind things, loving things, and we're planting seeds by our words. Or, you know, to say bad things at times. And that's something we want to try to develop out of the habit of. That's what I talked about last week. I said if we had the habit of lying or cursing or saying bad things, it's probably because of our hearts. It's probably because we're sad or angry. But the good news is all of us, even adults, all of us can learn to change to learn to change the positive habits of our talking and our speech. And that will help us in our hearts as well to feel more joyful and happier. So today, I just want to share with you the positive power of words by a couple different examples. The positive power of words for you specifically. So as kids, you're hearing things about you. And you're hearing things told to you all the time. Some people are saying, you're smart. And so that may motivate you to go study hard and, and be a good student, maybe. Or maybe somebody says to you, you know, you're a good athlete. And so that is what your time's taken up with, playing baseball or softball or basketball and growing maybe into a better athlete because people said that about you. Or maybe it's you're a musician. You know, you're a really good singer, or you're a really good musician, so you practice and practice, and you get better, because that person said that, or whatever other activity, dance maybe, art, many, many different things. Now, that's good. That's all good, but here's the thing. It, we hear bad messages from other people, too, all the time. So I remember when I was your age in second grade, people said, I'm smart, and so I got good grades, but then I got glasses when I was in third grade. And then I got braces when I was in fourth grade. And then people started calling me a nerd. And I didn't like that. That was very hurtful to me. So that happens sometimes. We hear people talking about us or random people at school or maybe just someone on the internet. All kinds of words we're hearing all the time. So here's my message for you today. Instead of listening to all those other voices speaking to you, Instead of listening to them and what they say to you, why don't we instead listen to what God says to you, what God's words are for you, and take that on in our minds and hearts. So this happens all the time in the Bible with various characters in the Bible. Here's a couple different examples. So in the book of Genesis, there's a guy named Abram. Abram doesn't have a child, and he's so desperate to have a son. He wants to have a son, and he is so sad because he doesn't have a son that he's about to give up, but then God renames him. He renames him Abraham. You know what Abraham means? It means father of a multitude, father of many, and Abraham believed. He, be, he then believed in God, and God gave him a son, Isaac. And the rest of the story is that he did become the father of many, many, many nations. And then there's another example I like in the Bible, a guy named Gideon. So Gideon was a wimp. He was a coward. And the thing is, God had a plan for Gideon. He wanted him to become a mighty hero. And the name Gideon means... Mighty man of valor. That's what the word means, Gideon. Mighty man of courage. And eventually, eventually, Gideon fulfilled that destiny, that purpose that God, for, God had for him. He became a great warrior. And then here's my favorite example of all, and I identify with him very much. Peter, the apostle Peter in the Bible, do you know what his original name was? You probably don't know. It was Simon. So Jesus renamed him. He said, you are Peter. And the word Peter means this, rock, right here. Just like our altar here. That's what the word Peter means. Because Jesus had a plan for Peter. He said, you are no longer Simon. You are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Now, you don't have to read much about the story of Peter to know that he was anything but a rock. He was pretty much the opposite of that. He was wishy-washy. He was emotional. He was not very trustworthy. 
He had a problem with lying. So he was the last guy, you might think. But Jesus saw his potential. He saw his potential. And so eventually, like we heard after the resurrection, after Jesus went to heaven, Peter fulfilled that potential, and he became that person, that rock on which the church is built. So God is always doing this. He's always trying to speak words to us. And there's a great example of him speaking words to the whole church at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Now, this past Thursday, we celebrated the ascension of Jesus. So you know the story that 40 days after Easter, Jesus, after that time, went up to heaven to be with our Heavenly Father. But during the time that he was here, the risen Lord, he talked to the apostles, he appeared to them, he lifted up their spirits and their hearts, he shared with them many things, and then he was getting ready to go up to heaven, and he gave them their final instruction, the most important words. He said, all power and authority has been given to me. So here's a picture of him, show that picture there, of him about to go up to heaven, and this is his last words. He's about to give them his authority of all heaven and earth. So he's very, very careful. This last directive, this final statement, he's going to say. Here's what he says. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been, been given to me. Go, therefore, and what? What do you think? <laughs> well, this is very important. Does he say, go, therefore, and eat pizza? No. Go, therefore, and play bingo? No. <laughs> Go, therefore, and have long, boring ceremonies that people fall asleep in? No. Does he say, go, therefore, and have a whole bunch of really complicated rules that nobody can follow? No. He said, you know what he says? You're thinking. Oh, that's okay. I'll tell you. Go, and make disciples. Okay, you were thinking. All right. So this, these four words are why the church exists. These four words are why St. John's Church exists. We're here to make disciples. It's the number one highest priority for why we exist. And a lot of churches, maybe today, sadly, unfortunately, are, are getting smaller and shrinking because they forgot about this, because we do a lot of other things sometimes that are less important than this most important thing. Go and make disciples. That's why we're here, and that's why you're here, because you're growing disciples who are, and we as a church are all growing disciples who are growing disciples. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions. So here is the verse again that I learned when I was in second grade. This verse again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So I learned that in second grade, and I know you're all smart, but honestly, that's a lot of words, right? That's maybe a little difficult for you to memorize. If you, can, if you want to, you can. So I said, that was so important for me as a little kid to learn those words. But let me give you some suggestion of some Bible verses that you already probably know, I'm pretty sure you do, and that they could be your life verse right now in your life. They could be a, a verse that you know and memorize, and then you carry around in your head every single day. So here's one example. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. You know that one? You heard that one? Okay, so most of you have. Okay. Well, that one is one Jesus says several times. It's just simply love God with all your heart. Okay? So what is that about? Well, it's about what you're about to do, which is receive communion the first time, Holy Communion. I always say, you are what you eat. And so as you receive our precious Lord for the very first time, you're becoming more like Him. That's an important way to love God. And we love God as well by prayer, by trying to pray every day, and just every day trying to be more like Jesus. So the, the second one there, love your neighbor as yourself. You heard that Bible verse? Yeah? Okay. You all have heard that one. Well, that one's tough, let me tell you. <laughs> it's tough for adults too. Because who's your neighbor? 
Who's your neighbor? It's everybody. Even your brother and sister. <laughs> Even your parents and your classmates in school and, your, and the other teammates on sports teams and everybody who you come across because we don't get to choose who our neighbor is. It's every single person. And that's hard sometimes because you're having a bad day maybe or the other person's being mean or something. But every day we can grow to try to live that out. And then, as I already said, Jesus' instruction for the church. He said, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. What does that mean for you? Well, it could just mean living your faith every day. Maybe sometimes sharing to other people that you love Jesus in your family or your friends at school. Just showing and sharing a little bit that you love, you love Jesus so much. And another way to show, another way to make disciples is by service. I just want to put one person here on the spot. You guys all know him. So right over here is Mr. Alex Kolakowski. Can you stand up, Alex? <laughs> he knew he was going to put on the spot. So I just looked before Mass at a picture of him in second grade receiving Holy Communion here. So for the past several years, Alex has been helping the children, helping Miss Connie, uh, to prepare for First Holy Communion. He played the role of the priest in, in their mock confession. So thank you so much to Alex. And uh, he is a great example of service in the church. <laughs> as, a, as a high school student. So, so kids, we're, we're always growing. And that's a one, wonderful, wonderful way to show your faith is simply by serving others, serving here in the church. And now a final word to everybody, to all the adults here gathered. This all applies to us as well. So what could be your life verse? It could be a word from God, a word that he says in the scripture. It could be a character. It could be a story. You see, the thing is, it changes through the course of our life. It depends on our state of life, our season of life, whether we're young or old, what we're going through what right now. What might give a, what word of God might give you clarity in your life right now, give you greater purpose in your life going forward? And here is some super secret, top secret information. You might be thinking of that verse or that story, but you have no idea where it is in the Bible. So here's some super insider information how to find it. Ready? Google. <laughs> Just Google that verse or that, that story or that character and then read it this week. My challenge for everyone here gathered is to spend 10 or 15 minutes this week finding that, discovering that, and letting that word speak to you and guide you in your life. It can make all the difference in our life. So we're proud of you kids. We're so proud of you. Remember always that God says what he says. He says that you're children of God. He says that you are loved and we love you. We're very proud of you today. Bottom line, our words matter and God's words matter. Our words have power, but God's, word, God's words have God's power. So go use that power. Amen. Okay, guys, you can go back to your seat. <laughs>